Hello, vinyl community. Hi, hope everybody is still doing well out there. Um, yeah, <laughs> I've made a, a return. Um, maybe a temporary one. I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. But uh, yeah, apologies for being away for uh, for the last few weeks. Um, I have had a pretty horrendous time of it, uh, has to be said. Um, one or two of you out there are aware of what's been going on. Um, I'm not going to go into it here. Um, suffice it to say that um, by uh, the beginning of last week, uh, I pretty much kind of got to the end of my tether. <laughs> and I thought, something has to give. Um, I, need, I need to have a break. I need to you know, get away, have, have some kind of day off from myself and from the situation and stuff and all the rest of it. So um, if you can possibly have a day off from yourself, I don't know. Uh, that's a bit bizarre, a bit weird. Um, but um, yeah, so I I just thought, well, I, I need some kind of therapy. Don't we all? <laughs> um but uh, yeah, and I thought, you know, I really, really wanted to go to a, a record fair, basically, because um, it's something that I haven't been to since well before lockdown. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was really, really missing that experience. And I thought, yeah, yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I need to go to one. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, uh, there weren't any ones locally coming up. Uh, over the bank holiday, not that I was aware of on social media or advertised anywhere. Um, they usually have one um, on the bank holiday Monday at the uh, Leisure Centre in Stratford, uh, which is quite a big one, um, which I've been to for the last two or three years. Um, obviously, last year they didn't because of COVID. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been, I've been to I've been to a couple of those. And uh, they're usually pretty good, so um, so I, I put a just put a message out on on Facebook basically, just asking if anybody knew of any any record fairs in the South Warwickshire area or you know relatively locally, <clears throat> thinking maybe I you know somebody would sort of come up trumps, and um, yeah, lo and behold, I got a message from. Um, uh, Mr. Stephen Alexander, um, also known as Psych in the Valleys, um, who uh, very kindly uh, told me that uh, there was one near to his hometown in Hayon Wai uh, on uh, Bank Holiday Monday. And uh, yeah, would I be, you know, obviously be interested in going certainly yeah i messaged him back and said yeah absolutely that i would um unfortunately one or two things happened again in the interim few days uh so that by the friday before i i had to message him and say unfortunately that i couldn't and um, basically um i needed my my wife to change her plans so that um, we could kind of work out what we were gonna what we were gonna do. Um, and fortunately, she did. So uh, that gave me some freedom to be able to go out on uh, on on the Monday. So I messaged him back and said, "Yep, I'll, uh, we're all set. I'm I'm very very happy to go and and, and meet you there." Um, so yeah, so I set off about half past six on Monday morning. Um, uh, no, well, no, it wasn't that early, half seven, sorry. <laughs> it was a couple of hours journey or just shy of that. Um, wasn't an awful lot of traffic on the roads. Um, and uh, got into town, parked up, and uh, uh, Stephen had already just arrived. And um, we met up, and, yeah, it was great. Went for a coffee, um, had a chat, um lovely meeting a guy you know um obviously i've seen him on uh on youtube lots of times you know he's heavily into his sort of you know reggae and uh 
and, and so on, you know, um, and uh, yeah, you know, just just really just hit it off, got on really, really well. Uh, and then uh, after after the coffee, we went and uh, sauntered over to the um, to the butter market, which is where they they held the uh, the the fair itself. Um, not terribly big, uh, maybe about eight ten tables, something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, we had a look through. There was sort of some stuff in the middle with some box sets on and some books and sort of DVDs and so on. Um, some of the sellers had some really good stuff, but it was very expensive and a bit of a premium. Uh, and uh, But one seller in particular, I bought um, uh, I was bought, bought, a, bought a two or three, well, three, three records from, um, which were very reasonably priced and uh, was happy to... Uh, pick those up so I'll show those to you now so the first one well the first two are actually Wyndham Hill titles uh, some of you are aware that I do collect these um, went for a long time without actually finding any and then all of a sudden Ben started to get some in um, and uh, I seem to be seeing them all the time now and that sometimes always the way um, saw this one wasn't sure that I already had it um, because I've already got uh, a couple of uh, um samplers um but uh this one is invitation to windham hill so this is from 1985 um so yeah you've got the direct metal master there uh these are on uh subsidiary of a m records um and they sound, they always sound excellent, these uh, records. Anyone who's not familiar with them, um, very kind of uh, uh, sort of ambient kind of artists, soloists usually, um, guitarists um, and uh, pianists, uh, people like George Winston, Alex Degrassi, um, uh, William Ackham and Michael, wonderful Michael Hedges. Um, they all kind of selection of tracks from various albums in the catalogue on this uh, and uh, yeah I was really uh, really pleased to get that they always have sort of nice landscape photography as well on the covers which is uh, which is nice so uh, yeah I was pleased to, to grab that uh, and then as I was flicking through he actually had quite a few Wyndham Hill some I already had um, some I wasn't particularly familiar with um, this is one I've never seen. I have seen on CD, but never seen on vinyl. This is George Winston's uh, Winter into Spring. So, yeah, really, uh, really pleased to see this one. Um, I'm not sure chronologically where this one comes. I know the first one he did was Autumn because uh, he's kind of done four, which are obviously all for the seasons. Uh, I think this one lies between Autumn, which was the first one, which is just superb, um, and December, uh, which is the one with the white cover, sort of wintry picture, um, probably is his most well-known and um, favoured album. Um, and but this is uh, this is excellent. Um, I have heard bits of this before, um, and I was tempted to get the CD because uh, the CD is usually available but certainly not the um the vinyl um but yeah um pleased to uh pleased to get that and again that was pretty cheap so okay um this was recommended to me by uh by Stephen um I, I did know about this record and I had seen it on uh on Amazon I was tempted to get it but I was procrastinating and uh, as is the way with these they tend to sell out quite quick so he told me to grab it and um yeah i kind of didn't hesitate too long uh, this is shades of blue don randall ian carr quintet um and uh yeah wonderful wonderful cover there um this is a um obviously faithful reproduction of the original similar to dusk fire um 
in style and packaging. So you've got obviously the right up there, lovely flip back cover. Um, I haven't actually opened this, cracked this open yet, it's still actually sealed, but I have streamed it and played it and it's, it is wonderful. Um, and uh, well worth picking up um, if you like uh, quality, uh, great classic uh, British jazz. Okay, so we then um, uh, left uh, the the uh, the market and the the fair. Um, and Stephen picked up a few a few bits. Um, obviously, I'm not going to tell you what he got because uh, he'll he'll I want to spoil the surprise. He'll probably uh, get around to doing a video and maybe showing that at some stage. Um, so, but we went into the shop. And this is his local. Um, he doesn't actually live in Hay, he lives in Bre uh, Brecon nearby, um, but it is his kind of most local shop. Uh, so he's he's been going in there for, for quite a while, um, by all accounts. And uh, yeah, knows the guy in there very well. Um, and uh, yeah, quite the, quite the character. Um, and yeah, went in and started uh, fishing through the, uh, the, A to, the A to Zs. And uh, so uh, I uh, looked through, see what they got, and sort of as I was going through, picked out some things, uh, nothing particularly, uh, well, apart from one, <laughs> not particularly, nothing particularly rare or, or difficult to come by, but uh, all in really nice condition. Um, this is an album that I've, I've heard dozens and dozens of times over the years. Um, everybody knows this, um, but I've never owned it on any format at all, um, but was very familiar with it. Uh, of course, Atom Heart Mother, uh, Pink Floyd. Uh, he actually had several copies of this. Um, he had an original uh, Harvest, which was 50, 50 quid, um, which seems to be the going rate for... Um, sort of uh, some early Floyd albums, originals these days. I don't know why, because they're sold in their bucket loads. They're just so ridiculously abundant. Um, seems crazy to charge such ridiculous prices for them. And I, and I didn't want to pay 50 quid anywhere near. Um, so um, failing getting a, a new repress, I um, which he did have a, a one in there for about 30 quid, um, I picked this one up, which was £18. Um, this is an 80s fifth press. Um, still on the, obviously, the original Harvest label. A um, little bit of a thin pressing as they sort of went in the 80s. Um, but it sounds pretty good. Uh, I must admit, on, um, on listening to it again, I... <laughs> The first side isn't kind of as good as I remember it. I, um, it's kind of a collaboration with Ron Geeson. So it's quite wacky and off the wall, sort of orchestrated with kind of vocals and so, uh, sort, of, um, sort of choral vocals and so on. Um, and uh, I just seem to remember that it was more, it's it sort of, because it's a kind of a whole side of the record, as you know. Um, and I just seem to remember that it was kind of a bit more varied with the, the different tracks and um, it was a little bit more interesting, <laughs> so to speak. So, uh, yeah, um, but interesting to revisit again. Um, same definitely can't be said of side two. Um, I absolutely love the first, particularly the first three tracks on side two. You've got If, Water Song, Summer of 68, which is just my favourite song on the album. Richard, wonderful Richard Wright song, um, and uh, yeah, Fat Old Son, Gilmore's quite nice. Uh, the silliness of Alan's psychedelic breakfast. Uh, yeah, I mean, all in all, it's 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 not a bad album. I wouldn't say it's classic Floyd by by any means. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, but I was I was happy to pick it up for. For what it was, and it and it's a, a decent, uh, it's not you know decent pressing sounds sounds pretty good. So happy with that. Okay, um, a nice folk find here, prog progressive folk find. Um, this is incredible string band. 
and Liquid Acrobat as regards the air. Um, I had heard this years ago, um, but it wasn't uh, one of their albums that I was really familiar with. And I kept thinking that it wasn't as good as their first sort of four or five records. Um, but it's really, really excellent, actually. Um, very, very glad that I picked it up. Um, so you got the talking in the end, fantastic Robin Williamson song, kicking it off. Um, yeah, Worlds They Rise and Fall, which I always really like, which was a Mike Heron song. Um, uh, yeah, nice updated version of The Tree uh, by Mike Heron, which was uh, on the very first album. Um, they do a kind of uh, more band orientated, more band version of that. The first uh, incarnation of that was very, very much just uh, pretty much Mike and, and, and the guitar. Um, but yeah, nice. A uh, little bit of spine damage there, but nice textured cover. One or two marks. Um, the vinyl is pretty good. A um, few crackles and pops. I see on that lovely original Pink Island. And yeah, it was relatively, relatively inexpensive, so I was happy to get that one. Okay, next one, a bit of a novelty band from the 70s. Um, I always like this group, and uh, I've seen this album a few times, but it's it's in a very cheap section for a pound or two pounds, but it's usually pretty beaten up and trashed. Um, this is the wonderful Fox. Um, this is their 1975 debut. So this is, an, I think they're an Australian band. Um, and uh, the singer renamed herself Nushka Fox. <laughs> Hence the name of the, the band. Um, and she's got uh, quite an unusual sort of purring kind of vocal. Um, a little bit reminiscent of kind of Eartha Kit, perhaps. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah, wonderful 70s kind of, um, yeah, uh, sort of, you know, picture there, portrait picture of the band there. Um, and, uh, yeah, great. I mean, it's got the hits, uh, Imagine Me, Imagine You, and Only You Can. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, a bit of fun. Um Nice songs, um, and uh, Javi's picked that one up. Yeah. Okay. Um, this uh, this next one was uh, by an artist that I've never been a huge fan of, even though he's kind of renowned. Um, unfortunately, gets um, saddled with just the one song, and I always thought certainly from the the album that i got of his um that uh all all his stuff would kind of be pretty samey really and nothing particularly out of the ordinary um but uh Stephen definitely recommended that i uh i should i should uh purchase this and it was uh it wasn't uh expensive so i i picked it up um this is ralph mctell's 1972 album uh, not till tomorrow and yeah I got it home and uh, I was very very uh, very pleasantly surprised um, it's not it's not a killer album uh, throughout um, but the highlights are very very good um, the opener Zimmerman Blues is fantastic um, and uh, Sylvia is really nice um, I think the track first song on side two was the one that uh, Stephen really liked, which was Barges, which he said I think he heard on a, a radio show, and hence why he went out and bought the album. Uh, and then there's also the song Another Rain Has Fallen, which I thought was really nice, some nice chord changes in there, sort of almost kind of transcendent in a way, um, which is something that I never expected uh, Ralph McTell to do really um i suppose i'm yeah i, I don't know I, I sometimes think i'm I'm a bit unfair with these artists because 
you kind of judge, uh, you know, judge them by, you know, sort of Streets of London and so on, or the Streets album, uh, which, you know, I just never play. Um, but uh, but this is uh, this is really good. So, uh, yeah, um, I might now perhaps uh, explore a bit more of his catalogue. So, yeah, thank you, Stephen, again for the recommendation. OK, and the last one I'm going to show a um, little bit of a story with this. Um, when I was in the market, uh, I was uh, there was a seller. Uh, who had quite a, 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 a decent section of kind of progressive folk and uh, uh, sort of prog and so on, um, and uh, all really, really minty, but very, very expensive. And um, I uh, actually saw uh, a copy of an album that I've been looking for for forever, basically, um, and it was in really minty condition. Um, but he was asking sixty pounds for it, which is a lot of money. <laughs> um, and uh, not, you know, I mean, I have paid uh, more than that for for records before now, but I, I wasn't really prepared to pay that much uh, for for this particular record. So, um, but then I was kind of umming and ahhing, you know, I was saying, oh, should I get it? You know, and Steve was saying, oh, it's very, very exempt, which it was. It was very dear. Um, but then I'm thinking, oh, am I going to be kicking myself when I get home? You know, as we've all been in that situation. So um, anyway, so whilst um, whilst I was in the shop, I was th thumbing through the uh, the A to Z section, and uh, Stephen was uh, in the folk section, and he suddenly passes this over. <laughs> and my eyes just popped out of my head. I couldn't believe it. Um, so yeah, um, obviously this is uh, Pentangle and Solomon Seal, um, and some of you know I've been I've, I'm a huge Pentangle fan, and this is the only one out of their first six records um, before they split that I was missing, um, because basically it didn't sell well at all, um, and they they label jumped, and uh, it's just I just never see this never see this record at all um so yeah so he uh passed me <laughs> he passed me this and i just thought immediately oh it's going to be trash it's going to be terrible and yes there are there is a little bit of wear on the spine um a few sort of marks surface marks there bit of kind of um bit of kind of weathering here on the bottom but the vinyl itself uh is uh, it's just immaculate. So uh, this is actually a US um, copy, so not uh, not UK, um, but yeah, absolutely delighted beyond words to uh, to get this, and um, heavily indebted to Stephen for for doing that and for also not keeping it himself because <laughs> I think he would have quite fancied uh, fancied it and, uh, comes with a lyric sheet as well a reproduction of the pentangle there uh, apparently this is Solomon said it's based on the uh, on the ring uh, the seal of the ring which I think there's a picture on the front cover that depicts that so with obviously the depends angle on it but yeah what a, a a fantastic album this is uh jackie mcshee the singer uh, was quoted as saying this is her favorite uh pentangle album um and just it's just brilliant um sally free and easy bert yanch opener is wonderful um and of course, then you've got the fantastic uh, Willie O'Winsbury with just a beautiful, uh, beautiful Jackie McShee vocal. Um, just six minutes of absolute bliss. Um, really, really beautiful record. And uh, to get this for £15 <laughs> um, oh, is just astonishing, to be honest. Um, you know, uh, when I could have paid 
you know, forty-five pounds more, and uh, you know, uh, admittedly the cover was fantastic, but who knows, the record might not have been quite so good. Um, but uh, yeah, delighted, delighted to finally get that. So yeah, all in all, it was a, a fantastic day, um, and uh, yeah, just obviously we we kind of parted and uh he needed to get back and uh obviously i've got a two-hour drive as well so but we've said you know that we'd uh probably do it again sometime um and maybe a you know obviously a vc meetup um at some stage would be nice too so uh yeah so once again um obviously a big big uh thank you to Stephen. um if you're not familiar with his channel um it's his channel's called psych in the valley um please go and check him out if you haven't already uh he's very knowledgeable lovely guy um so say he likes his reggae but he's into kind of folk um and jazz and uh uh you know uh, sort of all sorts of of good stuff he likes to pick up vintage singles and sort of 10 inches as well so uh you know very very varied uh, in his tastes um but yeah uh once again guys uh yeah it's nice to be back um i don't know how regular i'm going to be making videos because uh um i've still got some some ongoing things and i don't always uh you know things i've got to deal with i'm not always in the zone as it were to make uh, to make these videos but uh um until we meet again which hopefully won't be too long um as i say i've got I've been, i have been buying still been buying records online going into the uh the shop uh so i do have a huge backlog of stuff um to show uh hopefully i'll uh come back on before too long and um uh catch up as well with that which would be Great. So anyway, until then, uh, take care of yourselves and um, speak soon. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye bye.